like the little Tiger Cat 724G. It ain't little. That's a big old rubber tire machine. Rubber tire tree cutting machine. So we bought this a couple of months ago. To not necessarily replace our other 718, but to become our primary rubber tire buncher. It is a used cutter. Y'all can see the door logo on it. Gar equipment. That's where it comes from. In Dodson, Louisiana. If you're uh, looking for used equipment or anything like that, I highly suggest hitting those guys up. They have an excellent selection of used equipment, used parts, um, salvage machines and parts. They can get new parts. Cylinder packings, I mean, you just about name it for logging equipment, they can get it. And they have excellent service. So that's today's video sponsor, Gar Equipment. Make sure and go check them out. You can find them on Facebook, their website, I believe is garequipment.com, but you can Google search Gar Equipment Dodson, Louisiana, and it will pop it up for you. So anyway, what we're doing is a first thin, our typical stuff here. This stuff is, uh, I think this stuff's like 13 years old. It's growing extremely well. Extremely well. We're not using our track cutter to do the thin in here. A, it's dry on this particular track that we're cutting, so we don't need it. And B, it's, it's down, but that's besides the point. Oh, Mr. Camera focus. So we're doing our normal uh, 70 basal area thinning prescri or prescribed thin on, on this track. A few bushes over there starting to block them out. So basically when we get done with this stand, we'll end up with somewhere in the neighborhood of, uh, it'll be about 300 stems an acre left with the diameter of these trees to get the proper 70 basal area. So this is not your typical uh, thinning machine. This machine is, uh, I'm wondering if that thing will fly off or fly back off there. Anyway, your typical thinning machine is these little bit, a little bit smaller, like the 718, like what we already have. Um, uh, they don't really make, they, they did make the 718G for a little while. Um, whatever reason that machine did not pan out like Tiger Cat thought it should or whatever. And they quit producing it. I bought this machine because we'll primarily use it in our larger second thinning applications. And my little 718 done a jam up job, but it was just a little slow. A little weak, should I say. This machine here cut the big trees and just whip them around like the little 718 does these small trees. And it has also increased our production using a rubber tire cutter in a thinning application, a first thinning application like this. It's faster, stronger hydraulics, you name it boost production it's, it's, it's there I believe this machine has like 270 280 horsepower something like that it's equipped with uh, 34 26 tires means they're 34 inches wide on a 26 inch rim you see they're a, quite a bit smaller wheel than what we typically use it is equipped with the, I call it the, the Fiat, but I may be wrong on that, but it's the Tiger Cat FPT engine. It has been deleted. It does still have all the DEF system on it, but it's been deleted, so it doesn't use DEF any longer. Um, before anybody asked if it was burnt, no, it was not burnt. The machine had some uh, hood damage. 
over the engine bay when it was bought by GAR Equipment, and whenever they ran it through their shop, they couldn't get it straightened out, so they had a salvage machine that had burnt with a hood that was good and straight, so they put that on there. I got some paint from uh, uh, when we bought it. I just haven't had time to paint it. But it's the F, I believe it's the FBT 6.7 engine is what's in this thing for as big of a machine as it is guys this thing bends extremely extremely well i highly highly recommend this machine to anybody it has far impressed me like it just it just further solidified my opinions on why tiger cat is and possibly will forever more be the king of rubber tire cutters. There, there is zero denying that, that uh, Tiger Cat has, is leading the industry by far in the rubber tire buncher game. It is also equipped with the 5702 head, which it's typically used for larger stems, final felling. It's doing a fantastic job of accumulating, as I just saw. It's making some nice pockets, or uh, pockets, bundles for the skitter man to pick up. It is also equipped with a auto accumulate so as y'all see every time those big arms close around the tree just about the time that it gets pulled back in or gets pulled in tight it uh it makes the you keep holding the, the button to close the grab arms and it makes it auto accumulate your stem for you really helps speed your operator up. As is typical with most of your rubber tire bunchers today, you know, it's, it's joystick steer, all that good mess. Um, has a really nice LED light package on it. I would have preferred to have the 5000 or the 5600 head, but I couldn't find one at the time that I was looking to make the purchase. So we opted to go ahead and purchase this machine with the 5702 head. And I don't regret my decision. Uh, it does, it does a, a fine job. The machine's been producing. Uh, it's, it's been producing about 330, maybe 350 tons a day by itself in this stand of timber, which is pretty phenomenal. We typically use the Balatine tea. Got me. But this this saw head is equipped with the uh, Nova T. Basically the same thing as Balatine. Balatine. I'll say Balatine. I mean that's all right there. That thing made a fantastic little bunch. Uh, I normally prefer the Balatine teeth. The Nova teeth seem to be doing well. Also, the only problem I've seen with the Nova so far is it seems like the edges want to round a little sooner. The tooth gets a little duller a little faster. Um, I don't know if that's a different carbide or, you know, whatever to make it do that. But, yeah. But hats off to, to Tiger Cat. 
the the hour meter on it shows it has like 7,000 hours. The meter showing how many hours that it's actually been processing wood only has about 5,500 hours. It was in a large clear cut when uh, wherever it come from, I think it come out of Mississippi, but wherever it come from, it come from a, a large final fail operation. It might have been a final, I mean a large thinning operation, but the operator dropped some trees on it. It's got some dings on the cab, minor things like that. But the thing I like about buying something from Gar Equipment, whenever they purchase it, it goes through their shop and any pins and bushings that have major slack in it that needs done, even if it has minor slack and the customer that's buying it wants it replaced, they replace it. They go, they check all the pressures and pumps and it gets a 100% service. Everything from the, I mean, every oil, fluid, any, any fluid that's in the machine, differentials, transmissions, whatever, it, it all gets changed and out the door fresh. Um, this machine is also equipped with the wide range technology from Tiger Cat, which means they eliminated the, the two speed transmission that the older ones used to have. Those could also have some issues with reliability. Luckily, we've never had problems on ours. Um, now the other 718 that dad had purchased in 2015, 16, something like that, it did start having problems. He has had problems out of his, but our 09 model that I have, it has never given me a, a minute's trouble. But basically, it eliminates the two-speed transmission thing. So, you gotta get it off the stump. There you go, Mr. Operator. Um, it, it has a, they used to have a two-speed transmission, so you had a high and low range. The only time you put it in high range is if you were traveling, you know, moving from one job site to the next, whatever. Uh, you never put it in high range other than going down a road, you know, a roadway. Now, when they have what's called this wide range, High and low is all together. It's basically just like a bit. I mean, it's all hydrostatic. It's always been hydrostatic, but now you're go you you have high and low basically all combined together. Now you do lose some overall top speed on the machine, like you you used to see like um, I think it was like 15 miles an hour out of the high speed on a two speed transmission. Now this machine will only do 10 mile an hour going down the road. So we used to walk ours around a bunch, like, you know, driving it from job site to job site. You can still do that with this, but it just takes a little bit longer. So it's one of those trade-off things. But the you'll watch him at times whenever, especially he gets done making his bunches and he goes to running backwards to his pile. He likes to thin from the front of the row. I know traditionally a lot of people like to thin from the back whatever the operator's comfortable with. He's producing me the volume of timber that I need a day, and he's not burning no more diesel than, actually broke. He's not burning any more diesel than what you typically would. So, yeah, but anyway, whenever you, you go to watch him run, either from, to a pile or from a pile, it will, um, he can drive, he can, the machine will travel faster on the ground to get you back to your harvesting area. That helps increase productivity. Something else that this machine has, the 720 also has it. The 720, for those of you that don't know, the 720 and the 724, the exact same chassis size, like width, length, wheelbase, everything's the same. It's just sticker numbers, and then they change the computer in it to where it has a, uh, a higher horsepower rating in the 724. I mean, you may have some larger pumps, stuff like that. But overall chassis, 724, 720, they're, they're all the same. Even though they market the 720 as more of a thinning machine, and this is supposed to be more of a clear-cutting machine, but right, it 
it's, it's the same size machine. It does the same job. But anyway, they both offer the same cooling technology. Right above the back right tire, instead of the radiator running, you know, I, I always called it being in line with the chassis, it's, it's turned crossways. They call it, I think they call it uh, cross flow technology or something like that. But basically, instead of pulling air from the back of the machine, or actually it pulled from the sides, it pulled from it pulled from the outside of the machine, both you know both sides, and then exhausted your hot air out the back. And it, in my opinion, it kind of helped keep the pumps cooler. Yeah, it was blowing hot air across everything but i mean man those that was a the only thing with it that was a pain was it was the flex air and the flex air does have problems but either way uh i'll see how i like this but i do like how the radiator actually is is, is long ways with the machine like it's running instead of running this way across the machine it's running from front to back now instead of side to side and it literally pulls air straight over the tire where it's good and cool and go straight across your cooling package and it seems so far to be doing a fantastic job of keeping that cool but they have a big plate in between the motor or the engine whatever you want to call it and all the hydraulic pumps that's in the back door because they're all still located in the back just like the old ones were and I almost feel like there's a little bit of trapped heat back there. Like maybe we may not be getting as well of cooling or airflow across our hydraulic pumps. And it makes me wonder if maybe that could potentially create a heating issue for us. Maybe, maybe not. Uh, I just don't see a way that it's like exhausting the air, the hot air that's trapped in the back around the pumps out. Whereas before it would blow the air out the back you know it was always circulating air it may have been some hot air but instead of that air being stagnant and just getting hotter and hotter and hotter it was moving if that makes sense so i'm curious to see how well it stays cooling this summer because this is going to be our primary cutter once it continues to dry up so long as it is dry for that machine to work that is going to be our primary cutter now um uh, especially when we're doing our second thinnings and stuff it is just it, Entirely too expensive and costly to operate a track cutter when it's dry with the way it wears tracks and everything else it's just it's these things are so much more cost effective I mean this machine here has an 80 gallon tank and it burns to produce those 320 tons it's burning about 50 55 gallons of diesel a day um, it's <laughs> That's, that's impressive, guys. I mean, a track cutter to produce that much, you're gonna be looking at about 75 to 90 gallons a diesel a day, depending on your operator and how hard he's running the machine. So, I hope y'all enjoyed that. We're, uh, we're gonna make our way back up here to the loaders and everything. I've been meaning to do a video on that thing, and I haven't, like I said, GAR equipment, great people, great service. Go check them out. Give them a call if you need anything. Make sure you let them know if you do. Uh, make sure you let them know. Hey, I saw this on Cutting Edge Logging. Or I saw y'all on Cutting Edge Logging. And uh, that way he he knows that it's, uh, you know, it's, it's getting out there for him. So, and, um, yeah, it, the man does fantastic work. It, it, if all of our dealerships had service like he does, our equipment problems wouldn't be near as bad. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Everybody wants to jump on and, oh, let's go tackle all these big problems that we have. And we do need to address some of said problems, diesel insurance, labor cost, uh, low wages to cut and harvest timber for uh you know yes we need to address all that but those are major things that's not going to happen overnight and even the other won't happen overnight 
but that's something that if enough loggers would actually band together, we wouldn't be uh, violating some antitrust laws and everything else that could come along with all that mess. Uh, you know, just say meal strikes and whatever, just using examples uh, to try and get some other things corrected. We need equipment dealership reform. That's what we need. And, I mean, that's... I'll die on this hill because there's, and, it, and, ha, and and what's bad is it's not the guys in the shop or like your service managers. They're just, they're doing what corporate tells them to do. And it sucks, especially when some have said people were acquaintances, friends, whatever you want to call it. Um, just i hate that stigma that it puts on you know it it it, it, just, it pits it pits people against one another creates hard feelings and and there shouldn't be any hard feelings in those situations um so i don't know i just like i said i'll die on this hill of we need equipment dealership reform the prices they charge for stuff and the way they treat customers is unacceptable and <laughs> I don't care who that upsets. It, it's, that's the God's honest truth. It's what needs to happen. It's um, There are more loggers going out of business today because they basically, the, the price to get your machines worked on, you, you, can't, you can't afford that. You can't afford to do that. You can't afford to pay that mess. It's... I, I don't, it's it's just something that, it just needs to be addressed. It needs to be addressed because it's, it's ridiculous, completely and utterly ridiculous at the price of what these shops are charging and how they're doing their customers. Oil field people, they making they may can live off of that. They may can, they may can put up with that stuff. They're making, they're making the money to pay those prices that they're wanting. Loggers, farmers, you know, your mom and pop construction companies. It's almost, and this this is <laughs> going down a rabbit hole here, but I almost feel like corporate America may be trying to weed out the little man, the mom and pop construction companies, the mom and pop logging operations. And I'm sure there's some major corporations of logging that can sustain paying those prices on things and everything else. And it's just, you know, it's, it, it's a business. It is what it is thing. We just pay it and go on about our day. But it just almost feels like like they're like like they're just trying to get rid of the small guy, the little guy, the the people who make America go, grow, whatever. It's uh that that's I know that's a far reach, but that's just what it feels like when because like there's more loggers going not more it just doesn't help maybe that wasn't a good choice of words it just doesn't help the situation any at all with uh astronomical prices at a dealership phone cut off i guess they didn't even want me talking about that uh but anyway there are more people going out of business simply because it's just it's too expensive to pay to have your stuff worked on and you don't have the time to work on it or people like myself you're just you're in a situation where i just can't do what i used to i can work on it i'm smart enough to work on it i can i've done it for years but my body will not let me so i'm stuck relying on dealerships or independent mechanics and stuff like that and when you're being taken advantage of and everything else it just makes it very very difficult to continue on and uh, I said it just almost feels like if they continue 
it's like a it's almost like a thing of oh we'll just keep going and doing what we're doing to push the little guy out and then eventually it'll just be all major corporations doing all the logging and construction and oil field work and everything else and that sucks because the little man keeps america going at least that's how it used to be i don't know i may be wrong on that uh that's a lot of rambling that's a big rabbit hole to jump down and uh it's not really logging related so uh yeah i guess in a way it is so anyway hope y'all enjoyed that like i said highly impressed with my little 724 or big 724 y'all go down in the comments and let me know what we should call it kind of like bertha i'm not sure on it yet but anyway we need a cool name to give it i mean the old rubber no rubber tire you know that's that's our uh that's that's mobile and uh our old loader that's granny and the the skitter that's we just call him big green the track cutter's mean green i don't guess we've ever mickey's he's he's the wood stroker that's the that's the that's the wood stroker <laughs> so uh and then the box at chambers that's that's the egg beater so uh y'all go down there and give me a cool name and uh just drop me a comment let me know how y'all been I appreciate all y'all for hanging around and all the new subscribers that we've got here recently uh i think we're getting close to thirty thousand now or something like that i really appreciate it so y'all uh y'all stay cool stay warm stay dry if it's cold or wet or whatever where you're at it's a beautiful day here today and uh that's all i got hope y'all enjoyed it Till the next video. We'll catch y'all next time, baby. We're out of here.